My name's Tina, Tina Barrett, and I'm Danny Barrett's youngest sister. I'm Susan, Susan Barrett, Scullion, Danny's older sister. The night Danny was murdered um, was a Thursday evening, and there was a lot of tension in the area because um, it was during the hunger strikers, and word had just been released that Joe McDonnell had died. And that was the 8th of July, so understandably the 9th of July there was a lot of tension and red and, and stuff in the area and Danny and his friends had planned to go to the local disco. And understandably that was cancelled due to the, uh, the tension that was in the area. So Danny and his friends came back to sit at 11 Havana Court and he had sat just there on the porchway with my father, just directly behind him and myself and Susan was there at the time. And um, there was a lot of shooting and squealing, and I just remember it was just a nightmare shooting, banging. One minute he was there, the next minute he was gone. Um, Susan, you could say a wee bit more. Danny was, Danny was say, sitting on the wall, my daddy was beside him, and me and Tina was further in the hall, and we heard the shot, and we run back, and the next time my daddy came in, he said, Jesus Christ, Susan, our Danny's been shot. And when we run out, he had fell in the, no the next door's garden. That's where he had fell back. So at the time, we didn't have a phone. And I run to my friend's house in Brooklyn Park that had a phone to phone for an ambulance. But my daddy cradled down the inside of an act of contrition in his ear. And it was mayhem, as you can imagine. And my mum had been round visiting a friend in Strathroy, so my daddy wanted to go to break the news to her because he knew Danny was dead and he had asked the neighbour to go in the ambulance with him. But on the way to the hospital, the ambulance was stopped three times. Black Street. And flat and coming out by, so by the British Army and the uh, RUC. They didn't know Danny was alive, or Danny was dead, sorry. They never gave him a chance if he had been alive. So later on, um, my mum, they all went to the hospital and the soldiers came and raided the house. And they went through everything in the kitchen and we didn't know at the time that they were sent down with a gun. We found this out. It was in quest a year later. And they also raided Danny's mate's house, Mickey Holland's house. So Danny's inquest um, was for August 1982. And we were all there and this soldier he was referred to a soldier B. Got into the witness and said, witness stand and says that he seen Danny with the gun. He seen five masked men going into our, the house and van Danny's house, and also the puff of smoke. My daddy sitting couldn't listen to the lies, lies no longer. And my daddy got out of the seat and went over and started to punch the head off the soldier for, for lying about Danny. Soldier wanted to see him running to get away from my daddy. They called it the kangaroo. He was just leaping and leaping. Yes. My daddy was small in stature. I but, did take over him. Well, I'm just saying that my daddy and my uncle, Danny Heal, couldn't take the lies any further in the courtroom. And an RUC officer at the time actually put his hand on my daddy's shoulder and he said, Mr. Barrett, I don't know how you listen to those lies. Danny was already proven that he was neither a gunman nor a red hitter. And we knew that day, it was August 1982. I have the original paperwork at home and I have all the original statements of Soldier A and Soldier B and I've went through them all and all Danny's friends, everything, there was nothing to prove it. Even though in the inquest it was proved that he neither was a gunman or a rider, but the British Army wasn't held accountable. But can I also add, my daddy always told us that we're ever telling Danny's story, to mention that Danny, at his inquest, the jury was just out for five minutes. But, and he, he just says, always tell that, because that is mm -hmm. very significant. And that said that Danny Bart wasn't a rider, or sorry, not, well, wasn't a gunman, and not alone not a gunman, but he wasn't even a rider. There was no residue of anything on his fingers. His whole inquest papers and the whole um, autopsy reports are all there. Our Danny was as clean as the day he was born. But I think the most relevant thing to talk about now is the aftermath of Danny's death. At the time of his murder, my mummy was on her 37th year.
My daddy was just 41, is that right? No, 40, 39. 39, there you go. 40, it was an inquest then, he was 41. I had been reading up, yes. sorry about that. Not okay. But life was never the same. My parents really tried their best just to exist. My father became the more active ruling parent. My mother existed. And years later, I went into counselling to understand how this has all impacted us. You know, like I was seven, don't have no recollection of Danny prior to this, but know everything after it. And I feel that we lost a part of our parents that day as well. Yes, and my mother died crying. She died from the day she was, the day Danny was died till the day she died. My daddy died prematurely. He never drank, never smoked, no bad habits at all. And he died 60 years of age. So it did on, it. oh, without a doubt, it, it caused his untimely death. My it mother did. was frozen. She was seen, yes, she's there, but that was all. She was a shell Just of the woman no, she was. She had no quality of life for a long, and long just sad, years. just unbelievable. And we love the fact that the likes of the Bala Murphy families and Bloody Sunday, everybody's entitled to do yeah. truth and justice. And when I say that it's next clip, I'm not undermining them, but Danny Baratar, Bloody Sunday, Danny Baratar, Bala Murphy, he's everything, do you know, he's one individual, but we're all the way for truth and justice. We've got the truth. He was innocent, I know he was innocent. Hold him accountable. Third brother, we met with the HET. We should never have really done it because it was all a farce. And our Danny was murdered sitting at the door. As Susan says, they took his life away in a second.